Well, I've managed to get myself yet another project. Hopefully this one ends up a little better than the Sika 750 that ended up being parted out. This is a 1978 Suzuki GS750. One of the best sport slash sport touring bikes made in that era. It was the first, well yeah, the first generation of Suzuki four strokes. Up until then they would produced only the uh, GT two stroke series as well as the uh, less than successful RE5 rotary, which almost put them under, and that was almost it. So I paid $350 for this. Naturally, it didn't come with papers, but I've already started the process to get those. Those are no worry. No worries to get. I've done that a number of times. A bit of a lengthy process, but it's really not all that bad once you break it down and you actually find an insurance agent that knows how to do it. The hardest part was just finding someone that could tell me the process to go through. So we're going to start with, probably, the story goes that this thing ran last year sometime, so I might be lucky, I might just have to put some gas in it and see if it runs, but more than likely I have to pull the carbs apart on it. Uh, the brakes seem to be dragging quite a lot, so I'll have to pull the calipers apart and see if I can clean those out. But overall, it's in excellent shape, as far as I can tell. I mean, this is just dirt on the tank. Someone's repainted it at some point, and did a rather nice job, honestly. The only faults, cosmetically, really, that I can find are a couple small stone chips. There's a dent in the front fender here. Oh, and a uh, rather lovely rust hole in this back megaphone that I'm going to have to do something about. But other than that, it is in extremely nice shape. And frankly, I'm very happy with it. Hopefully it'll uh, make a good touring machine to go alongside my uh, 81 RD350. So just for the hell of it, I've thrown some fuel in the tank and I've uh, added some oil the level back up to where it should be on the sight glass and I figured I'd see if it would fire up I mean you never know I'm probably still gonna pull the carbs off and clean them out anyways just so I know it's running well but should be interesting to see if it'll actually start turn the uh, carbs on the prime here so if we got any stuck floats Headlight works. <coughs> See what happens. Choke. Not bad for sitting for a year. Yeah. <laughs> 
it seems like the main jets are all plugged up. So like I thought the cars were plugged, but hey, it runs. Not bad for 350 bucks. So, carbs gotta come out. First step, we're gonna uh, pull the tank here off. Nice thing about the Suzuki's that I've worked on, at least the older ones, there's no tank bolts on them. They just sit there. And they rubber mount. So we'll pop the fuel line off, and then we'll take the gas tank out. Small point of note is Suzuki's and a lot of other bikes of the era, and modern ones too, have two lines that go to the tank. A main fuel line that you can see someone spliced in a small aftermarket filter here, and a vacuum line that actuates the automatic petcock. Gotta be careful though with adding filters in that you don't restrict fuel flow, otherwise you can lean your carburetors out. On four strokes it's not as big a deal, but on two strokes you need to be really careful because you can grenade a piston doing that. So the next step is to loosen the air box off here so that I can slide it backwards away from the carburetors to get them out. Looks like there's two bolts, one here, one on the other side. And then it should just pop off. Loosen the force off the carb clamps on each carburetor and slide it backwards. So unlike 99% of bikes that are out there where the uh, air box is put in the frame first so you actually have to remove the engine to remove the air box this one has actually two bolts and just the clamps and it pops back and slides right out which gives you tons of room to work on here which is frankly beautiful so I've already loosened off these clamps or rather they were already loose previous owner never allowed to tighten them up I guess which is why you should always check these things uh, next up I'm going to loosen off the two throttle cables and the choke cable and then remove the carburetors for cleaning. So as my other carb cleaning video was about was demonstrated using CV carbs, I figured that I would just briefly show you here the difference between that video and these carbs, which are slide carbs. So if you remember from the other video, the carburetors had a set of butterfly valves on each carburetor and a vacuum operated slide that moved up and down inside the each uh, carburetor bore. On slide carbs, as the name would imply, each one, as you can see, has a brass slide in it that is directly operated from the throttle cable. And each slide moves up and down, there you go, moves up and down directly with the throttle cable actuator. These tend to provide a uh, more sudden acceleration, a slightly better performance than a CV carb, but at the cost of they're not as good on fuel, so economy and emissions wise, which is the main reason why CV carbs came into favor. And also they're not quite as smooth, the on-off throttle transition it, on these is much more abrupt, abrupt whereas the uh, CV carbs has a much smoother acceleration curve. Other than that, these clean exactly the same way as a CV carb. Just assemble the jets out of the bottoms, uh, take the slides out the top, clean everything, and put it back together and you'll still be good to go.